Hey everybody, I'm Jessica Henry Gray and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to paint this beautiful covered bridge. You can, bridge, you can see it back there. We're going to have a lot of fun with this one. Alright you guys, I'll see you on the other side of this intro. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My channel primarily focuses on plein air painting. I focus on painting in a manner that teaches you the basics of plein air painting with efficiency, composition, and basically getting out and having a good time. Enjoy my videos and let's get out there and paint something beautiful. When I begin this um, little sketch, I, what I want to do is kind of think about the format that I like most. And I pretty much knew from the beginning that I was going to go horizontal with that design. And of course the dappled sun was something that I really wanted to make sure I captured with this exercise. And I also wanted to work on really kind of clarifying and isolating some of those beautiful greens and demonstrating the best way to handle those in a situation without being overwhelmed. Now with your thumbnail sketch, you do not need to make a really detailed drawing. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of blocking in some of these big shapes and how I want them to lead back to the bridge. And I loved the repetitive um, sort of contour shape that was echoed in the bridge as well as some of the rocks up front. I didn't want to make it as obvious as I had it there in my sketch, so I kind of played those down just a little or made them more angular in the painting. But um, anyway, so you get the idea, just kind of playing with some of that rhythm in the design. And then uh, the way that the trees sort of framed the bridge, um, that is really how I wanted to think about it while painting, is using nature to help sort of frame, uh, sort of funnel where I want the viewer's eye to go. And so I sort of sketched the trees in place and then I established my borders using uh, what I have down. And I loved on the, right across from where I was standing on the other side of the bank of this little creek, was this really cool wall that just went straight up, sort of a stone wall with dripping ferns and um, contours in the stone from river. The river had obviously was a lot higher at one time. So I wanted to get a little bit of that in and I felt that it compositionally it had a nice um, sort of feeling like a funnel again, just leading the viewer right into the painting back there. And that really was back there but at the bridge was pretty much my only area of strong contrast. So I had to sort of capitalize on that a little bit more. And then what I'm doing here now is I'm establishing that most of all of the painting is in middle tone. And so I'm isolating where my darks are gonna go. And then um, it's easier to do with oil paint, but then where my lights are gonna go. So I'm establishing here also the, I'm gonna sort of get my head in that game of the brush strokes are gonna be horizontal across the river. They're gonna be darker back here because that is the focal area. And I do want some stronger contrast to, um, back there. So then the river is gonna be darker up front and there are just some subtle rapids and things um, that I'll be putting in there. And this is some of the rocks. Now the value is gonna be strongest and darkest up by me um, because as values go back, you have to be consciously aware that they're going to get lighter as they go back. And that's why I have that little value scale next to me on my easel. So I set my sketch down and I just want to show you this. Uh, these are um, little view catchers, viewfinders. You can hold that up and so what I want to show you with this viewfinder is you can look through there and I often will not use these. I know some people really like them but that view, you're so limited. You you feel um, sort of like in handcuffs. You can't move this tree, you can't move that cliff. So I just wanted to show that to you real quick. If you're struggling with finding a composition, go ahead and use one to just look through, but don't feel like you have to be married to whatever you see through that little window. Um, so if you like a tree that is off to the side, then um, add it. And um, as long as it contributes to your composition in a way that is gonna work for you.
right, so I want to show you what oil paints I'm using today. I've got titanium white, cadmium yellow light, and cadmium yellow medium, yellow ochre, transparent red oxide, which is new, and then burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, alizarin permanent, and phthalo green. I've got a little bit of Galkid gel over there, and I've got some odorless mineral spirits off to the side hanging on a little hook. And then I've got my jumbo clip holder that I just love. I shove my brushes in there. There's a link down below where you can find that on Etsy and you get 10% off if you enter my code. Um, all of that's down below. And then you can see my newest addition to my palette, this um, box and paint little palette garage kind of thing. I absolutely love this and I've tried a lot of different versions. Uh, if you've been following me on YouTube for a while, you know that I've been really exploring palette garages. I have found that this is the best design. They come with a little tiny um, palette knife that fits perfectly into each one of those little slots so you can clean it out. And then a little felt thing on the inside of the lid that you can put the clove oil on. I just, and it rubber bands up together, you throw it in the freezer and I just, I'm thrilled. So <laughs> it's coming to France with me. What I'm doing here, and this is something a little bit different, uh, if you've been following my videos, I don't normally paint with transparent red oxide, but I wanted to try it. I, I know that transparent red oxide and phthalo green, I've heard, make a gorgeous green. Well, they do. Look at this beautiful green that I have on my canvas that has a little bit stronger of the um, transparent red in it. And if I add a little bit more of the phthalo green, it just makes this like look look at that gorgeous dark leaf green um, so yeah I'm toning the canvas with that and I'm just working it into the weave of the canvas and then I'm gonna wipe most of that off so when I tone a canvas I usually go a little darker than what I need because I know I'm gonna wipe it off so I'm going to uh, use my um, just a smaller brush um, by the way those are treckle brushes and I am in love with this brand I'm not an ambassador I don't get paid to sponsor them but I just love treckle brushes they hold their shape they don't splay and they have wonderful spring I buy the long versions of um, filbert and flats absolutely love these brushes so anyway and long handles they're they're nice okay so um, just a little bit I took some ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna utilizing my sketch that I made I'm going to begin by sort of plotting out where those key uh, features are on the painting and the reason that your sketch is so important at this point is because most of the time I hear from people that they get really overwhelmed when they're out in nature well your little sketch that you did helped to solidify your plans and what it was that inspired you with the scene it's very difficult to just jump in to a scene onto your painting without having a game plan. So um, that's why I encourage every student to begin, every painter to begin a painting with knowing what it is that you want to say. And the best way to do that is with a thumbnail sketch. So I've got mine down below and I did all of my sort of left brain analyzing thinking when I did um, my sketch. And now instead of looking at the grand epic scene before me I can just look at my sketch map out where these dark values are where the river is going to enter into the scene where these rocks are going to be placed to help lead the viewer back to the bridge and then of course back into the forest All right, now I'm starting to um, get some color. Once the whole scene was sort of blocked in and you saw that I wiped out some of the areas where I wanted that strong light coming through, I know that the light in this scene is gonna be really fleeting. It's gonna change very quickly uh, because that is the focus, the, the sunlight. And I know it's in the sky, it's gonna move across the sky and shift the shadows and the highlights. So being that this is dappled sun, I'm starting with those bright pockets pockets of sunlight but so here I've added a little bit of white to that um, sunlight color of cad yellow light and that before it was phthalo green so now I added a little bit of ultramarine blue and white to that to cool it down so it still is really bright and very sunny but it's cooler because it's further back and you'll see 
as my sunny greens progress toward the viewer, they're less cool and they're more warm sunlight. And that's one way you can um, sort of show that distance. So here I, you can see I've made a nice cool green. It's a darker middle tone green because up above and you know, in miscellaneous places in the background, there's just an overall cool shady effect from the trees. So anyway, as the light is sort of cascading down the slope, uh, I want to put that shady green down there. And that is ultramarine blue and some cad yellow medium. And less of the cad yellow medium with the ultramarine blue will give sort of a nice shady green color. If I want it a bit more opaque, I'll add some of the yellow ochre, which I did here. So it's, it's a nice darker green, but not very, very dark. So I'm painting some of the sunlight in the back and I'm using cad yellow light with the white and I'm mixing it right into that puddle of green that I had and um, because I feel that the middle tone and darks in the background are in place and they look fine, now I'm adding the highlights. And what I want to do at this point is to go through and just map out some of the darker passages that I see in the background, but I'm still keeping it kind of cool. So I've added some white, as you can see, and I'm going to just concentrate on getting some of those stones in the bridge. So I'm, I'm kind of mixing up a few different piles of the colors that I see in the stones. Sometimes there's a little puddle there that has more yellow ochre. Sometimes it has maybe a bit more sienna or a little bit more of the blue. I'll mix up a few puddles. So I've got my dark here and I'm thinking about the stones on the bridge and how they're sort of choppy and I'm laying them down bit by bit being conscious of the edges. I don't want the sort of choppiness to make it look like the bridge is weathered and the stones are all kind of squishy or fuzzy so I'm careful that the edges still look sharp. If you're wondering what I'm wearing on my hands lately in my recent YouTube videos, these are um, little hand gloves you can wear that um, help protect you from the sun and they're very cool and lightweight. Um, so, and I had a little bit of um, precancerous spots on my nose last year and so I just want to take extra precautions now uh, on my hands especially to avoid anything. So I'm taking some of this darker color and I'm kind of clarifying where the top of that bridge is. And I'm just laying down a, a very gentle horizontal stroke using different shades of dark as it goes across because the sort of the lip of the bridge up there had a bit of a shadow. And in pieces and little places there were some sunlit spots, but I get to those later. So I'm gonna be quiet here for a little while and let you watch me paint the bridge. Now in some of these passages in the water, I noticed that I did have a lot of the colors that I already had been using in the bridge, except that I felt that a little bit more yellow ochre and some of that cad yellow would make the water appear a bit more transparent up front. So I'm adding some of that to the color that I already had mixed up on my palette. All right, and so here I'm taking some of my darker pa paint that I'd already mixed up, some ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, and I'm just sort of drawing in where I want those trees to sort of live. And um, I ha later I stepped back and I looked at this and I thought, well, I kind of think I made the trees too even and static. So um, you can adjust that by just changing the way you want your trees to grow to make them a little bit more interesting. So some cadmium white and I just, or some white and it's a little cad yellow, a little bit of the alizarin to make this bright, sunlit 
orange. That's for my spots on the other side where the sun is hitting it. Quickly putting in some dabs on the trunk of the trees to create that look that the sunlight is sort of wrapping around through the leaves hitting the trunks of the trees, giving that dappled sunlight effect. And I do change the three spots on the bridge later. So if they're bugging you as they are bugging me, don't worry, I do come back to them. <laughs> As you can see, I'm starting to work on some more of the finesse of finishing. Some passages that I feel need a little bit more um, work to explain what they are. So this rock kind of comes in and there's a dark shadow around it, but um, so there's some smaller rocks and I want those to be there, but not to really jump out. So I'm putting those in as soft and quiet and sort of see them in the background uh, while I'm working there off to the left. But I liked how these rocks, and that's why I chose this area in the forest, I like how the rocks sort of tumbled down into the water and I wanted to capture that very organic uh, lay of these stones into this painting. So I'm going to be quiet here for a little while and let you watch me paint. And so um, basically to wrap this up, <laughs> I will clean up a few things and add some sparkles in the water and those three dots on the bridge that are still staring at me. <laughs> um, but anyway, I hope that you guys all got something from this video and we'll find something that you can take with you 
not just plein air painting, but in the studio as well. And whatever endeavor it is that you like to paint, portraits, still lifes, it all teaches us. There's a universal quality to art education that covers any spectrum that you want to work in. So I hope you enjoyed it and check out the links that I put below. Um, and I hope to see you at one of my upcoming workshops. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. All right, you guys. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.